Hello and welcome to this TGSA training video. The topic of this video is superficial dry needling. In superficial dry needling, the needle is inserted into the skin over trigger points, in the referred pain area of trigger points, tendinopsis and antesopsis. Superficial dry needling has been started by the British medical doctor Peter Baldry in the 1980s. Peter Baldry found that superficial dry needling is equally effective than deep dry needling and that it is less painful than deep dry needling, safe and easy to carry out. According to Baldry, the effect of inserting a needle into the skin is mainly to stimulate A delta nerve fibers and thus activate inhibitory interneurons in the dorsal horn, leading to a gate control mechanism. The ratio behind the lasting effect on superficial dry needling for trigger points is that the taut band relaxes due to the analgesic effect of the needling. In addition, it has been shown in different studies that superficial dry needling, especially when rotating the needles, can stretch connective tissue and activate fibroblast responses extending several centimeters away from the needle. Clinically, this can often be observed as a palpable release of the taut band after superficial dry needling. Let's have a look at the technique. Once you have palpated the taut band, here in the rhomboid muscle, disinfect the skin. Now insert the needle into the skin about 5 to 10 millimeters in an oblique angle. The reason for that is that you stimulate more A delta nerve fibers than if you would insert the needle perpendicular to the skin. If needling over trigger points, a local twitch response is not required. After 30 seconds, take the needle out and check if the tenderness by manual pressure is less. If it is less, then you can treat the next spot. If not, you insert the needle again for up to 3 minutes. To even increase the intensity of the treatment, you can insert several needles on the same spot and or stimulate the needle by rotating the needle. Superficial dry needling can be an effective alternative to deep dry needling. It is indicated for patients who respond strong to dry needling, for so-called strong responders, and for treating trigger points in muscles where deep dry needling is not safe. The usual frequency of treatments with superficial dry needling per muscle is about two treatments per week. Please keep in mind that dry needling should not be considered as a standalone therapy. In my experience, the best results are achieved when combining dry needling with manual trigger point therapy exercises and patient education. I'm Christian, thanks for your interest.